So uh, with the Google Beacon platform, a lot of uh, people actually compare it with GPS, and I thought you know it could be quite useful to um, basically take a step back and, and just see you know where we where we've come from. So um, one of the first handheld unit of GPS uh, was uh, came in the market in 1989, and at that moment in time. All it could do is really latitude and longitude. And because of security concern, uh, the satellite signal has actually been degraded. And as a result, it wasn't even that accurate. Um, and that was all it could do. However, if you fast forward it to today, um, then you know, maps and navigation is just table stakes. If you think about the other things they can do with uh, location or uh, location, location linked context, uh, then you can think about things like check-in, for example, very easy leaving uh, a tip uh, for fellow travelers, um, or maybe even dating. You know, there are some dating apps out there that will um, basically let you see kind of people that are kind of close to you. So if we kind of think about um, that, then a Beacon could be one of those things that, you know, at the moment, uh, perhaps the, the, the kind of things that um, we are thinking about is, um, is only a very limited kind of set of use case. But as time progresses, then what we're hoping to see is uh, with more context, then you could actually uh, see more innovative kind of use cases that we have not thought of. And that's why I'm really super excited about uh, the, the Google Beacon platform. So some of the use cases for today um, that, that we can think of. Um, so instead of um, saying that you know you are at a museum, you can um, say you can tell the user that they are standing in front of this piece of uh, artwork or what is in the in, in the room itself. Um, if you are thinking about getting the old-fashioned taxi, so instead of you know booking through the app and actually linking it to the user, um, you can imagine that you can wave uh, any of the cabs on the street, and because of the beacon that is on the cab itself, you can actually pay via an app. Uh, to the taxi driver without um, going through uh, the booking process itself. Imagine if you can kind of go into a restaurant and um, someone might sit you down or you might just find a free table and immediately you're able to browse uh, the menu and then order not just uh, saying, you know, hey, ticket number five, but actually say, you know, deliver it to this table. Um, so those are some of the uh, things that uh, you could imagine uh, with increased uh, kind of context. So I'm going to talk about the, uh, the three components uh, that made up the uh, Google Beacon platform. Uh, the first one is uh, the hardware, uh, Edison uh, color frame format. Second is the uh, proxim proximity beacon API, which allow you to uh, add attachments and um, essentially make uh, uh, color add more context uh, to the beacon itself. Last but not least, um, after you add those attachments and associated with those beacons, uh, then you can use the nearby uh, API to actually retrieve those in uh, apps that's built uh, on both Android as well as iOS. So I'll just go through uh, each one of those in turn. And uh, fingers crossed that the Sony demo and live coding will work as well as we go through. So first component is the uh, Eddystone beacon format. Um, this is a uh, open format that we have published, and um, it is uh, used for the Bluetooth low energy uh, beacons. And uh, as of today, we have 18 manufacturers uh, that are uh, manufacturing to those standards uh, that we have certified. Um, and apart from being open, um, what else is different um, about Eddystone compared to kind of other beacon platform that you might have seen? Um, the second one is cross platform. So once those um, Eddystone uh, Beacon have been deployed. Um, although we provide kind of library just for uh, Android and iOS, there's absolutely nothing to stop you uh, to um, extend that to other uh, platforms because we have published uh, those frame formats. So any device that uh, supports Bluetooth low, en low energy can potentially be a client uh, of Eddystone. Last but not least is extend extensible. Um, so if we think about the traditional Beacon uh, uh, or uh, Bluetooth beacon uh, format, uh, then the table stake is basically an identifier. So the, uh, the beacon itself will emit an ID, 
and that's all it does kind of continuously. Uh, it doesn't kind of take into account of, you know, which mobile phone is next to it and record it. It's just a one-way communication of IDs. Um, but taking that idea, we have actually extended it to different types of frame formats. Um, the next one uh, that we have is the Eddystone URL, uh, also known as the physical web. Um, so what we have done is uh, we allow you to encode a URL and put it on the beacon and act as a discovery uh, service uh, for your uh, website or, um, or, or web app. And you can hear more about the physical web uh, in, a, uh, in the next session um, with uh, Scott Jensen, um, who's our lead on uh, the physical web. Um, so if you're interested in that, I strongly advise you uh, to attend his talk. Next, Edison TLM. Um, so this is the telemetry frame um, which reports the health of the beacon in terms of uh, the uh, temperature or how much battery is left. And if you are deploying anything more than, say, a handful of beacon, you really don't want to kind of go and check on all your beacons, say, every day and say, you know, are you still there? Are you going to die? Um, and um, this is massively helpful. And when I talked to developers, I was actually quite surprised at how uh, forward-thinking they are in terms of um, not just thinking about development and ideas, but also on the, on the maintenance uh, of the beacons. And this is massively helpful to them. And, and, I, and I have to say, I, I, I can't, uh, I, I have decided I did not expect that that amount of interest uh, on a telemetry frame. Um, but that's something that is um, uh, truly kind of uh, helpful uh, when you're deploying in the real world. And those are just the ones that we have published uh, so far. Um, the idea here is that, uh, you know, more frame types uh, will become available as time goes by. So if you have other ideas uh, that, uh, you know, could potentially utilize this, uh, then please do talk to us and then, um, and then we can see, you know, what we, uh, you know, what, what we can do. So that's the Eddystone uh, format. Uh, that's the beacon hardware. So next is the uh, software part and uh, some of the uh, and, and some of the other uh, kind of interesting features about the Google Beacon platform. So next, I'm going to talk about the uh, Proximity Beacon API. Um, so with the Proximity, Be Proximity Beacon API, what you can do is you can register your beacon uh, with uh, the Google uh, services. So not only will um, that means um, it will increase the visibility of your business on Google service, but also any application that's developed on top of it. So uh, th what this screenshot is showing is the place picker um, API uh, for, um, uh, for developers. And um, developers could just uh, implement this and allow the user to choose uh, the places that's around them to select. So for example, if you are uh, making a meet me kind of app, then you can say, hey, can you meet me at you know, such and such uh, location, um, this could be uh, helpful to you. And if you deploy Beacon and register them using the G uh, Google Proximity Beacon uh, API, um, then uh, that will help enhance this and any app that uh, is built on top of it. Next, uh, as I've kind of alluded before, is you can add attachments uh, to Beacons. Um, so these could be um, any kind of arbitrary uh, payload uh, up to uh, one kilobyte in size. So we could, we could envision a lot of um, JSON objects um, being uploaded to describe you know, that location and give the uh, user more context uh, and the developer more context on uh, kind of what's going on around them. Last but not least, maintenance. So um, after we've emitted those kind of telemetry frame, it would be really ideal if you could actually um, have a list of beacons and see you know, how they're doing. So that's um, part of the uh, service as well. Um, so apart from uh, reporting on the telemetry um, frames, um, you can um, also uh, use the uh, cloud-based APIs uh, to update uh, the data that's associated with, associated with your beacon. So let's say if your menu change uh, for your restaurant, you don't need to kind of go through every single beacon and, and around kind of your restaurant uh, to change the menu. You could just kind of log in, uh, look at attachments, change them, and they will be done. Um, and that's just one restaurant. You could imagine that you know if you have a chain of restaurant or a chain of stores uh, where uh, things change constantly, um, then um, that is massively helpful that you don't need to go, go around every single beacon uh, to change the information that you're attaching to them. 
So how do you do this? Uh, first step is to get a Google account. And that could be as simple as uh, registering for a Gmail account and then uh, use that. Um, next um, is to enable the Proximity Beacon API in your uh, API console. And then you will create uh, an API key for either uh, Android or iOS and um, an OAuth2 uh, client ID um, under that link. And we will strongly uh, advise that you do all of those steps uh, before you um, actually started kind of coding and running. Um, so we have previ previously seen kind of developer running into uh, issues uh, when they um, essentially coded the app and then accidentally run it. And as a result, it was running against the wrong ID. And then um, after they register, they have some problem with kind of caching and refreshing the, uh, the ID. So we would strongly advise that you, know, you do all those things up front and then go to the last step. And um, actually, the easiest way that I find personally is to go to the GitHub um, repo uh, with the sample project, uh, compile those, and then run it. So let's see if the demo gods are in, working in my favor. So let's switch to the Elmo. Um, it's demo time. So a um, couple of slides back, um, a lot of you would have uh, caught me saying, hey, you got 80 manufacturers of beacons. And um, actually, it's a lot more than that. Um, because today, I'm going to unveil to you uh, one of the most expensive beacons that you can buy on the market, um, also known as a Lexus 6 uh, or a Lexus 9. Um, uh, Amazon? <laughs> um, so um, on here, um, what I have got, um, if we can kind of maybe do the white balance a little bit. Um, at the moment, it's kind of quite washed out. Um, so, um, so what you can do is you can um, actually s search or Google um, the um, our Eddystone um, repo, where um, one of the uh, tools that we provide developers um, is an application that runs uh, on Android, um, which um, allow you to uh, kind of mimic um, a beacon uh, for uh, using a phone. And this is really helpful in the development process because you can then change the ID really quite easily. So you know when you register and then you kind of inevitably uh, have maybe bugs. Um, and when that happens, you could um, kind of go back and, um, and basically uh, change the ID uh, relatively easily. So that's one of the tools that is super helpful. And then what I'm going to show you is um, da, 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 da. once you have uh, compiled the, um, the application that I mentioned in the last slide, which is kind of the fourth step at the, at the end when you compile that um, uh, Proximity Beacon API uh, sample, this is the kind of uh, application that you see. So you need to log in. And then after that, uh, you can scan for different beacons. So as you can see, I've already uh, provisioned uh, this beacon because I don't know how many beacons there will be in the room. Uh, and as a result, if I'm doing a live demo, this could be quite tricky. Um, and actually, that's a good lesson uh, for live deployment as well. So uh, when you're deploying um, in a live environment, make sure that you, know, you provision uh, things like a Faraday bag or a Faraday cage for your, uh, for your deployment crew so that um, they can isolate the one beacon that they're, de that they're deploying compared to the thousands that you know, may be in their van. Um, so that's something that's quite helpful. So when I click through, um, then you can see some of the information that um, I can actually provision. Um, so things like um, whether uh, the beacon itself is active or the coordinates and the place ID um, that um, this beacon is set against. So right now it's set against the, uh, the strand theater, which is where we are. Um, and at the, at the bottom, uh, you can uh, put in as many attachments as you want. Um, the type and the data is totally up to you, uh, one, up to one kilobyte uh, in size. Um, so that's kind of the, the little demo uh, for um, the proxim Proximity Beacon API. I encourage you to check it out. Um, so next, I'm going to talk about um, the um, interesting stuff. So once you have got your hardware beacon, stuck them up, uh, you have provisioned them and registered them uh, with the uh, Proximity Beacon API. Then a really interesting happen, uh, thing happened, which is all the use cases that you guys are thinking about. So with that, 
uh, what you can do is you use uh, the nearby API, which support both uh, Android and iOS. Um, so today, uh, if the demo guard will allow me, um, I will try to do some live coding uh, using nearby. So um, can we switch back to the computer? Thank you. Yay, okay, cool. Um, so um, the, a lot of these will be uh, fairly standard uh, if you have used uh, any of the uh, Google Play services uh, APIs. Um, so one well, of the first thing is kind of get a Google API client, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so what, where we start is uh, when things kind of get interesting and different uh, for beacons. So the first thing is um, to uh, just talk about when the um, Google Beacon, uh, sorry, when the Google API client uh, actually connects, um, then th that's the step when we kind of go in to then say, hey, can I subscribe to some interesting Beacon messages, please? And once I, um, and just to explain how the uh, kind of app works, I will just show you. Um, it is a very simple uh, app where at the top I have the Beacon attachment um, text. Um, so whatever beacon it sees, then it will run. And at the bottom, um, for debug and for demo purposes, I will also show kind of the, the status of, kind of where we are um, in terms of the, um, the deployment, uh, the, uh, the, the program itself. So that's the, um, so that's the program. And then, whoops. Uh, and then coming back seamlessly. Um, so um, kind of the, the plan is, you know, once we have uh, seen the, uh, the, the various attachment, what we do is we will uh, just put them up. Um, and so here's just a little bit of code to um, get an array of attachments and then just show them uh, on screen. So here is where I need to pray to the demo god that I can actually remember what to do. Um, so the first thing um, that I will do is I will um, create a message listener. Uh, actually, I do have that. New message listener. So the first thing that you see is I need to override it. You know, whenever I see um, a beacon, then I should really do something. Um, so uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is to add it to. Um, if I do see um, a beacon, is to add the beacon content um, to my array. And do, 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 new string. <coughs> Whoa. Get content. Wait. Okay. So once I uh, once I put that into the array, then I just need to refresh the content. Um, another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to override um, on loss as well. So once a beacon uh, become out of range. Then I want to get um, a message so that um, I could remove it from the um, from the list. You can contents dot remove new string uh, message dot get content refresh. Simple. So uh, some of you might have noticed that um, I actually put. Um, the message that content into a new string before I kind of set it um, on uh, to the array or add it to the array. Uh, the reason for that is um, the content will actually come back in a byte array, and an easy way to convert that is just to use a new string uh, to do that. Yay! So take explain that. Next, um, subscribe options. So um, the Nearby messages API is more than just beacons. So um, the uh, one of the idea here is that you could potentially uh, have two mobile devices talking to each other, and have a, and s a one kind of send message and one subscribe to the message. And as a result, there are various strategy um, of discovery that you can use. Uh, but given that we are BLE beacon, then our only strategy is BLE. Um, and because it's BLE, um, the timeout uh, time is. Um, very long. Um, I think we don't actually time out um, if you if you keep on subscribing to the messages. Um, so some of the uh, so this is kind of necessary uh, for that to happen. So I'm going to create uh, an option uh, or a subscribe uh, subscribe option. 
um, to the zone. And I could use the builder to do that. Yay. Okay, so I need to set the strategy to, whoa. Strategy barely only. Thank you. Loving auto complete. And then set callback. Just so call back, expire. So, and here I'm going to do beacon contents dot clear and refresh. So, so you might my question, hey, you know, why is there a um, whoops dot built? I forgot to build. Um, And uh, yeah, some of, the, some of you might wonder why do we have a on expire uh, color option given that you know, BLE um, is supposed to be always on. Um, one of the reasons for that, um, at least for Beacon, is that the user could potentially um, switch off uh, the functionality either um, overall or just for your app. And as a result, what you uh, previously expected to work, it might not. Um, so you should really uh, kind of uh, have a look at um, this kind of scenario and make sure that that works. So then, now we are finally um, at the point where we can subscribe. So nearby dot messages dot subscribe. And put in the Google API client, the message listener that we have um, just initiate, initiated and the option that we have then we need to add a callback, a results callback, and da, 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 da. callback. Yay, okay. So once we get the uh, status back, uh, we do need to check whether it is uh, successful. Um, says, um, then we will say am um, status tags. Set tags. Success. Woohoo. Else. Else. That has failed. Unhappy face. And we need to then actually handle the unsuccessful event. Um, putting in the status, even. Um, so the reason why we need to do that is um, the first time when the, um, when the user is running your application, uh, we will then go through a permission um, uh, kind of dialogue to just make sure that, you know, hey, user, are you okay with this app? Uh, kind of, uh, um, essentially scanning for beacons and, 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 um, and running. So uh, as a result, the first time when the user actually uh, run this program, it will always go through uh, the second, um, the, the else statement here, um, because the connection will fail um, because the user have not given you uh, the permission. So what we'll do is in handle uh, unsuccessful nearby result, we will um, then ask uh, for that. So if the status dot get uh, status code is equal to nearby message status code dot app not opt in, then we'll ask. Um, da, 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 um, resolve error. And this bit is also important. Uh, so I have also got a class variable called the M resolving error. Um, because you don't really want to palm the user um, continuously if they say no. Um, so as a result, you, you would need some kind of mechanism to check you know, whether you've asked them before and they say no. Um, and, um, and, uh, and what I'm going to do here is, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, um, now that will be true. So by default, it's false. And then um, after that, 
I will go uh, status dot uh, start resolution for results, and I will need to feed in the activity, which is this one, and also the request code. So the request code could be um, anything that you want. Um, and here is uh, purely so that um, what you can do um, is to have, you, you, your app might have multiple um, points where it will need to ask for permission. And as a result, you might need to, when the, uh, when the API comes back to you, you need to know which one has it resolved. So one might be asking for payment, and then another one may be asking for um, collect a beacon permission. So you want to keep track of which one you're resolving. And as you can see, it requires a try-catch block. Um, so um, if there's any, any kind of error uh, when it's trying to uh, get that kind of uh, permission, then it will uh, come in here. So so if the user is saying no, then um, we basically should say, hey, M status. Uh, text view dot set text user denied. Great. So we have doubt of the permission. Um, and once the permission uh, comes back, um, it will then uh, come back um, into uh, this method on activity result. And uh, what we should do is to just check that whether the uh, whether the results code is okay. Whoops. So okay, and the um, and this is just for cleanness. It's not strictly necessary for um, for for this particular demo because I've only got um, one thing to resolve. But is uh, it will be helpful um, if your app have multiple um, uh, kind of different uh, double. Sorry, um, if your app have multiple uh, kind of. Uh, requests uh, to keep track of which one. So once we uh, once we have got that, then we should subscribe to messages again. Great encoding, but I do have an error. So let's resolve that. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, great. Um, so let's come back to uh, end of coding. Woohoo! Um, but I still have not run my code yet, so things can still go very wrong. Um, and then the next thing that um, I want to highlight is uh, when you when when you should stop subscribing as well. So when your app is, uh, let's say the the model that you have is uh, as the user move around the store, then your app kind of changes context or it gives you more in wealth information. Uh, when the user exit the app or switch to another app. Uh, when the user is no longer paying attention, then you know perhaps you should uh, switch it off. And what this will do then is to um, help um, with battery life, uh, first of all, and also it's just kind of good clean code uh, to just say you know hey I'm now I'm now done, uh, let's unsubscribe, unsubscribe and disconnect. So I just want to highlight that number eight step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock my phone and. Uh, also reset my permissions so that I'm denying uh, this app access from nearby. Great. Da, 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 da. Cool. All right. So, fingers crossed. Uh, can we switch back to the app? Yay. Yay. Okay, cool. Whew, whew, whew. Okay, will this work? Control R. Please deploy. I think my phone is connected. Way. Okay, so this is a dialogue that we're talking about. Can we adjust the white uh, balance again so that we can see the message? Um, Yay. Okay. So this is what happened when the um, when the dialog color first comes in. So that's why the handle uh, error is uh, is important. And um, if I now click allow, then we say subscribing. Ooh, hello ubiquity, which is the attachment that we had before. Um, so 
I'm going to go really test my luck here um, and actually switch the beacon off. So this is now off. So hopefully the on loss will kick in uh, within the, the next minute or so. Um, I've tried this several times. It kind of varies a little bit. Um, and, um, and basically remove it. Let's see. Yay! OK. This is the reverse Hello World working. Um, <laughs> excellent. Um, so yeah, so you can see, you know, I could do this with my shaky hands uh, on stage, kind of, um, you, you know, using nearby. Um, so hopefully you can check it out as well. And um, let's switch back to the laptop. Thank you. Yeah. So that concludes the demo portion. Uh, but instead of um, kind of going to the um, going back to the slides, I thought, hey, I'll just do encode. Um, so. We have just run through the three components, uh, the Eddystone beacons, uh, which are the hardware and all the wonderful frame formats uh, that you can put on those, uh, those little guys. Uh, the next is the proximity beacon API, where I can add attachments, kind of add coordinates um, to my beacons and give it more context. Um, and then last and final is kind of my shaky coding uh, around nearby API. Uh, so that's when it gets really interesting when you put uh, the beacon functionality into millions of users potentially. So that's the overview. Um, in terms of uh, some of the uh, other things that is happening at Ubiqu Ubiquity, so as I mentioned in my talk uh, before, uh, Scott Jensen, who's the lead uh, on uh, physical web, is going to be here. So he's going to uh, talk to you about uh, in more details about the physical web um, and also ask him anything. Um, and if that's not sufficient for you, uh, then there is actually a Ask Me Anything uh, session uh, at 4.30. Uh, and we have uh, the product managers from both uh, the um, a proximity beacon API, uh, as well as the physical web uh, around. So you can ask them uh, anything about the Google Beacon platform. And in terms of uh, documentation, um, I put it up top because I know that you probably won't read it uh, a lot of times. Um, but when you get into trouble, then yes, please do kind of have a look at them. And in terms of the code uh, that I've shown, um, unfortunately, this is cut off a little bit. Um, so with the uh, Eddystone format, what we have done is we have actually uh, bundled in a bunch of tools. And the one that uh, the thing that was running on the Lexus, uh, on my Lexus 6 uh, is this um, helpful tool to turn your phone into a beacon. Um, the health warning um, here is that please, please do not turn your users' phones into beacons, even though that you could, uh, unless you have very good reasons and also you need to kind of just be very good citizens and tell your users that you're, you're, you're doing it. Um, so this is mainly, you know, our, our thinking here is me, uh, mainly uh, to benefit developers in terms of putting this tool out there. Uh, next is the Proximity Beacon API. Um, so the app that you've seen uh, that was running, adding attachments and showing your map, uh, et cetera, can be, uh, can be found um, at this location. And um, it has, although I demonstrate uh, just the Android version, we also have an iOS version uh, that you can download uh, and use as well. Uh, last but not least, um, I have the, uh, uh, I am online uh, and I'm relatively social. Um, so uh, please ping me on uh, Google Plus or Twitter if uh, you have any thoughts or uh, questions. Um, so how much time do we have, by the way? Uh, about 15 minutes. 15 minutes, okay. Um, I would Take some question. Um, I will encourage you to focus mainly on um, kind of the things that uh, perhaps I've demoed, and then uh, what we can do is uh, we can have a broader kind of platform uh, Q and A um, at four thirty uh, with the two product managers. Cool. Um, should we start it? Yeah. I was wondering, is there any way to authenticate or know if there's a trusted beacon, such as like, what if somebody tries to hijack your Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, the question over there is, you know, how do you how you how do you ensure the security of um, of your beacon? How how do you prevent uh, kind of other people from um, essentially changing some of the attachments? Let's say you're in a museum and then you put in, you know, hey, this piece of work is great, and then someone say, well, actually, it's kind of the, the, the least preferable kind of work from that artist, and you really don't want that. Um, so with uh, Proximity Beacon and, and uh, API and uh, Nearby, that 
that issue um, would not exist. Um, the reason for that is uh, with the um, with the uh, the Google uh, kind of developer API uh, key that you get, uh, you can essentially uh, the the beacon will only uh, and those attachments will only become available uh, to your app, and only you can change those attachments. And um, if you kind of wind the clock back a little bit, when I was um, demo demonstrating the uh, registration uh, application where you know, there was a lot of question marks in terms of provisioning kind of beacons, et cetera, uh, or registering beacons, um, in that at the top, you can just about see my email address. So the, the, the people that uh, are updating the attachments actually need to be signing users. Um, so that's an additional kind of level of security, not just anyone that get hold of your app um, when, you're pu uh, when you're deploying, but they actually need to be signing users as well. Um, So what? Um, um, so the so the question there is, you know, whether the attacker can can um, figure out your uh, unique identifier and perform some kind of attack. So the um, only attack that they can do is to mimic your beacon elsewhere. Um, they can't change the attachment that you put against your own app um, because they would then need the uh, the signing keys um, of your application. Um, but um, for example, they could. Uh, detect what the unique identifier of your beacon is, and using a Lexus 6, maybe, um, type in exactly the same ID and place it somewhere else. So that is, um, that, that is something that the, they, they can potentially do. Yeah. Are the uh, beacons UID, beacons URL and attachment and single broadcast packet? Um, yes, so uh, Eddystone URL um, or, or physical web is essentially broadcasting an um, a encoder URL um, and, and that will be used directly. Um, yeah. Uh, how, how does, uh, well, uh, is there a way to check, uh, like, as a uh, application developers, that uh, to authenticate this beacon UID must be in this? Uh, uh, geolocation coordinates because someone could just pull that beacon and put it somewhere else and do some malicious stuff with it. Um, yeah, I mean that um, the, the the thing that we we would suggest there is um, if your uh, use case is very security conscious, then um, you know perhaps that's not the um, yeah, yeah perhaps it's not a good solution um, for that um, because people could mimic it. Uh, but then at the same time, uh, we do have uh, multiple layers of uh, protection um, in, in the physical web. So we have things like spam filters, et cetera. And um, I would say Scott Jensen, is, uh, he, he's going to talk about it. And also, he's a much better kind of person to, to explain um, kind of the, the various layers of protection that a user is going to have. Okay, so the sort of question there is, you know, at the moment, um, if you look at all the APIs, you know, they could potentially use uh, with other technologies, <laughs> not just uh, Bluetooth Valley LE beacons. Uh, and the specific question there is, you know, whether you can use NFC um, as being a beacon. Um, so at the moment, that functionality is not supported. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a great su suggestion. So uh, the question there is, um, you know, what, what are the various kind of Google projects that I guess use beacons and um, and enhance the experience? Um, so uh, mm -hmm. it is correct that you know we have uh, some Google Now cards um, that are built um, against um, kind of beacons. So we have a uh, well publicized trial um, in Portland, uh, whereby we uh, stream essentially live traffic, in, uh, uh, public transport information um, to the various um, kind of, uh, stations and bus stops. Um, so that's one example of you know, how beacons could um, kind of enhance user experience. Cool. Uh, have you used the uh, Jimbo beacons using the IP beacon API? And I have to 
Um, yeah. yeah, so I can't comment on um, particular um, um, yeah, particular manufacturer and, and their time frame of you know, deploying more products. Um, but quite often what we see is um, the, um, the manufacturers might publish kind of an update uh, to the firmware that runs on a beacon. And in the firmware update, they added kind of Eddystone support. So um, if you do already kind of have uh, beacons from, from one of our partners, then I strongly encourage you to uh, kind of maybe check and see you know, whether they support uh, kind of firmware update um, for the uh, uh, for Edison. <coughs> cool. I think we have, it's a wrap. Excellent. So um, there's two more sessions, uh, one on uh, physical web um, and also the uh, Beacon AMA. Um, so I do strongly encourage you to kind of come back and, um, and attend those sessions. Thank you. Thank you.